Get your rain boots ready. It is almost time for the 65th annual Dollar Bank Three Rivers Arts Festival. For 10 days, the Cultural District downtown and this year, the Rachel Carson Bridge will be flooded with hundreds of artists, plus tons of food and beverages. It is our city's biggest, longest art party of the year and includes free performances. This year's headliners are Ben Folds, Lost Lonely Boys, Doom Flamingo, Martha Redbone, our local symphony, and so so many more. It's all going down May 31st through June 9th, noon to 9 p.m. every single day. Find all the details and a map at trustarts.org slash TRAF. Today on CityCast Pittsburgh. Memorial Day is just around the corner, and here in Pittsburgh, that marks the start of wedding season. And there's no nuptial tradition more beloved around here than the Pittsburgh cookie table. We're sharing its history, some of our favorite recipes, and as a true act of service, where you can purchase your cookie table cookies if you're better at buying than you are at baking. It's Thursday, May 23rd. I'm Megan Harris, and here's what Pittsburgh's talking about. I'm with CityCast's executive producer and very important to this conversation, uh, a native Pittsburgher, Mallory Falk. Good morning. Good morning. How many Pittsburgh weddings would you estimate that you have been to in your life? I've been to a solid number, but maybe not as many as I would like since I, you know, left after high school. So I would come back for high school friends' weddings. But then by the time I moved back as an elder millennial, I'm now past prime wedding season. I don't know. I think you're getting into that second round of like second marriages and stuff. (laughs) Uh, And relatively new to town, producer Sophia Lowe, what about you? How many weddings have you been to here so far? Have you been to any? No, I've been to zero Pittsburgh weddings. (laughs) You are kind of young, I guess, for that wave of life. Uh, I guess that means you haven't had the full cookie table experience then yet. Kind of. I went to like this fake wedding party thing at Bottle Rocket and there was a cookie (laughs) table there if that counts. But yeah, no one my age is getting married yet. So someone please invite me to your wedding so I can have a real cookie table experience. You get like half credit, (laughs) Sophia. (laughs) Mallory, I don't I know I don't even have to ask you. You've been to many weddings. I'm sure you've seen many cookie tables. Yes, I have grazed at many a Pittsburgh uh, cookie table, but for anyone who's not familiar with this, it's uh, customary at a Pittsburgh wedding to have this long table that is loaded with cookies, and they're generally homemade by wedding guests. Uh, So if you get a wedding invite, you might also be expected to bring a batch of cookies. There ends up being this incredible spread, and you can eat some at the wedding, but you're also encouraged to take some home. Usually there are little to-go bags or boxes, but in previous (laughs) generations, people kind of just wrapped them up in napkins and stuck them in their purses, which I think is the true way to uh, experience a Pittsburgh wedding. I mean, depending on the state of the to-go boxes, that is still a tried and true tradition. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It makes me so happy that you're encouraged to take cookies with you, because if not, I'd definitely be sneaking them out. (laughs) Well, depending on what stage of life you're in, uh, you may have a summer packed with weddings, um, which means you may be on the hook for a lot of cookies. I have personally been asked to prepare five dozen cookies so far this year. So, Mallory, we are close to the same age. I don't think your argument holds water. (laughs) It's not even June yet. (laughs) Yeah. So if you're in a situation like Megan, we're helping you out with a guide to cookie table cookies in case you need some inspiration. But I guess we'll start with some history. Mallory, where does this tradition come from? So like a lot of great time-honored traditions, it seems like we don't actually know or there's no (laughs) definitive answer. Um, That is at least according to friend of the pod, Rosalind Skana Colgan. She wrote about this a little while ago for The Incline, RIP. Yeah. Um, She said there's just not a lot of early documentation of cookie tables, probably just because it was this thing everyone did. You just sort of knew about it. So she wrote that you can find records of cookie tables at other events like card games, church socials, PTA meetings going back Mm -hmm. to the early 1900s but that you didn't start seeing writing about cookie tables at weddings until the 90s, which we all know they were a thing well before then. 
I took a very informal poll uh, with my in-laws and with friend of the pod, Kevin Gavin. And yeah, apparently like there's there's deep memories, deep roots of the cookie table, but also what you just said, Mallory, like having cookies at like kind of social occasions where mm-hmm. they'd be all out on dining room tables and you just sort of graze as you're talking to your new friends. Let's yeah. bring that back. Uh, but I feel like I've also heard stories, um, you know, just like floating around town about them being present as far back as like the Great Depression, um, that maybe it's a custom that some of our uh, European immigrants brought to the city. There's a lot of lore, I think. Yeah. And even if there's no official documented history, it seems like a pretty likely origin story, or at least the one that's become accepted, that, mm-hmm. you know, in the early 20th century, you had all of these immigrants coming here from places like Italy and Poland. Great Depression hits. They couldn't afford to buy wedding cakes. So this new tradition emerged where family and friends would bake cookies for your reception. And it was this way to save money, but also for the people in your life to show their love for you. And, you know, which is beautiful. And so this tradition really just stuck. I just love them so much. It's such a lovely display of nostalgia and people get so creative with it. Um, Like I've seen them displayed on like huge replicas of our bridges, like 3D printed ones, which can be gorgeous. Um, Someone, a wedding I went to once, they served them on their grandma's silver um, because like they'd never had an occasion to use silver before. Um, And uh, there was another one that they had guests bring like thrifted glass um, that they found from all over the region. Um, And sometimes they're around photos of the happy couple. Um, And then, of course, like the recipes themselves can be like an homage all into their own. It's just so neat. Yeah, I mean, you mentioning the grandma's silver, that's one of the things I really love about this tradition is that for a lot of people, it can also be a way for loved ones who have died to still have a presence at the wedding. Like, mm-hmm. this is great Grandma Ethel's Ladylocks recipe. Um, <laughs> unfortunately for me, my Pittsburgh grandma was more of a Costco bakery gal. She didn't have, like, some <laughs> recipe that was passed down through the generations. Or if she did, she took that to her grave and never passed it down to us. Um, but I do love this for other people. Look, the Costco chocolate chip cookies are fantastic. I would never turn one down. Very true, Sophia. The other thing that I think is kind of special about cookie tables if you're marrying a non-Pittsburgher is that it can be a great way to blend your cultures and combine your traditions. Uh, So my husband, for example, is from Albuquerque, and our cookie table included bizcochitos, which is this traditional New Mexican cookie. It's like buttery and has cinnamon and anise. It's so good. Um, It's actually the official state cookie of New Mexico, but so it felt like a way to honor both Pittsburgh and Albuquerque at our wedding. Ooh, I'm still fun. sad I didn't have a, a Pittsburgh cookie table at my wedding, um, but it was during COVID. It was a yeah. large enough crowd that any kind of open air food felt weird, um, but maybe for a future anniversary party. Uh, but Mallory, what you just said made me wonder, does Pennsylvania have an official state cookie? So I had the same question when I was preparing for this episode. I took it to Google, and the most reliable source I could find was this Penn Live article from 2017 that said, while there have been multiple proposals for a state cookie in the state legislature, nothing has come to pass. Curious if you have any guesses what our proposed state cookie might be. I would think some kind of like shortbread or something like a paisel or something. I don't know. That's just a guess. I know the answer, so I won't ruin the game. (laughs) Yeah, Megan, your guesses were kind of more interesting than at least one proposal, which is the chocolate chip cookie. About as basic as you can get. Yeah, so according to this article, I guess back in 1998, uh, this senator named Robert Thompson was trying to show a class of fourth grade students how a bill becomes a law. So he pushed for the chocolate chip cookie to be designated as the state cookie. Um, I'm just going to quote this article because it's amazing. Five years later, he blamed state government committee chairman Charles Lemond for the lack of progress. Senator Lemond supports the general idea of a state cookie, Thompson told the Pittsburgh Tribune Review, but he's allergic to chocolate, so he never lets my bill out of committee. (laughs) That's... That's so petty. (laughs) So petty. And then I clicked to that Trib article, and I just have to read you the beginning. Um, State Senator Robert Thompson has a chip on his shoulder. A chocolate chip, to be precise. (laughs) This was the incredible deep dive. Did he have an idea for a state cookie, or did he just block this bill? I'm, I'm not sure about that. I will say there was one other proposal in 2003 from another rep named Craig Daly. Um, he wanted to add the Nazareth sugar cookie to the list of state symbols. I am not familiar with this cookie or either of you. Mm-mm. No. No, but I do support sugar cookies in almost every form. Oh, really? That's my least favorite. <laughs> Agree to disagree. <laughs> I think they could be fun. 
So I have some questions about cookie table etiquette for when I get invited to my first Pittsburgh wedding. <laughs> How many should I bring? I have a habit of baking way too much, but I don't think that'd be a problem. Um, but still like minimum count. How many can I take? I don't want to shove more into my bag than is socially acceptable. Yeah, so Rosalind's article that I mentioned, the incline one, uh, it does include a little etiquette guide, though it seems like it was geared more toward whoever is organizing the cookie table. So I guess Mm. like the wedding couple or whoever is reaching out to friends and family and asking them to contribute cookies. Okay, good. So I don't have to do math. Perfect. Nope, you just get an assignment. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Um, According to Rosalind, if you are planning a cookie table, uh, you should plan all told to have like four to five cookies per person if you're erring on the conservative side. And if you're feeling more generous, you could have up to 18 per person. Whoa, that's like almost a full batch. I know these cookies are like a little smaller than the usual bake, but still, that's a lot. That's Great. I could eat 18 cookies. <laughs> yeah. She said a dozen and a half. I'm not sure if she arrived at that just because it sounds nice or where exactly that number came from. That tracks, though. I feel like I was uh, once again with my informal polls, I was asking, like, what's the appropriate ratio? And I did not hear less than a dozen anyone for anyone I asked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, Sophia, sometimes people start baking months before a wedding and just freeze batches of cookies. It can be a whole thing. So I think you're not expected to just the day before the wedding whip up whatever the amount would be to have, you know, almost 20 per person. Gotcha. Yeah, there's a lot of advanced planning that goes into this if you're really serious about it and if your wedding guest list is enormous. Anyway, in terms of like how many cookies you can take, I imagine the inverse has to be true. So you could take anywhere from 4 to 18, depending on the size of the wedding and how big the spread is. I have to be honest, though, when I'm passing a cookie table at the end of the night and I am several signature cocktails in, I cannot be trusted to do that math. I'm just grabbing what looks good and heading out the door before anyone can notice. I mean, 18 is a lot. I think you can be several signature cocktails in, take all those cookies and still be good. And if you're new to the cookie table, make sure you get your to-go bag re- like uh, appropriately early because if you wait, it's slim pickings there at the end. The show today is brought to you by an incredible local resource, AIDS Free Pittsburgh, and their pledge to end the HIV AIDS epidemic in Allegheny County by 2030. If that is a cause that is close to your heart, make sure you're around for their biggest event of the summer, the sixth annual Too Hot for July. It is a party, but it is also a chance to get confidential HIV and STI testing for free. Plus info on the incredible preventative medicines we have now to keep yins happy, healthy, and feeling your most confident out on the town. So come on out to Allegheny Commons East Park on Thursday, May 30th. Yes, July is in the name, but the event is in May. Don't get confused. May 30th from 4 to 10 p.m. There will be DJ sets, a health fair and marketplace, a ballroom-inspired dance battle, cash bar, food trucks, and more. Plus, a performance by Tony Award winner Alex Newell, a.k.a. Unique, from Gleek. This is all thanks to True Tea Pittsburgh and so many folks doing the good work out here in the community. So do not miss out. Learn more at TooHotForJuly.com. Okay, I want to get into the actual types of cookies now. Megan and Mallory, what kinds of cookies do you all look for when you're at a wedding? Anything you're really excited to see when it's on the table? I actually need to ask my friends who just got married because they had these glittery drop cookies. I'm pretty sure they were a a version of a sugar cookie. So maybe not for you, Mallory. (laughs) But they had this flavor in it that I cannot identify. And I've been thinking about them for over a month. Before that, I probably would have said something like snickerdoodle-ish. So I didn't actually know there was an official name for these until I was researching for this episode. Um, But I have learned that what I love is called a peanut butter blossom. They're the peanut butter cookies with a Hershey's kiss in the middle. Um, But when I was growing up, my friends and I just called them boob cookies because they look like little boobs with a Hershey kiss nipple. (laughs) That's a really big nipple. (laughs) Anyway, now I know that they have a classier name. (laughs) I was curious what other kinds of cookies people get super pumped about. So obviously, I went to the Pittsburgh subreddit. Unsurprisingly, multiple posts about this. And I'll drop links in the show notes if anyone wants to comb through all the comments like me. But common cookies people mentioned included Buckeyes, Pizzelles, Thumbprints, Lady Locks, and Peanut Butter Blossoms. 
so somebody knew that they had another name. <laughs> Just not Valerie. I'm in the Reddit like, boob cookies, please. <laughs> And some people were also really passionate about whether store-bought cookies have a place at the table. One person said no giant eagle cookies, but someone really liked having like Oreos on the table. I know you can also like dress them up, dip them in chocolate, make them fancy. Yeah. And I mean, I understand being a cookie table purist, but personally, I'm not super bothered by store-bought cookies, especially if they're from a Pittsburgh institution. Um, Mm -hmm. We had smiley face cookies at my table. And because I got married in October, some of them were Halloween themed. So like a mix of the traditional smiley faces, but also little jack-o'-lanterns and Frankensteins. So, you know, I (laughs) I guess I guess some people would look down on my table. Oh, no. I mean, I'm fine with store-bought as long as they're good. right? Right. Like not just some old dusty, broken whatever cookie. It has to be special. Uh, I actually went back to the well and asked Rosalind um, for a a small update to her inclined piece. She said that her family believes very strongly that you have to have something chocolatey, something with more of a shortbread tea cookie vibe, Mm. and then something fancy like a pizzelle or like an Italian peach cookie. And quote, then we just build out from there until we have dozens on dozens. (laughs) That seems like a very good rule of thumb. And actually, I was about to recommend um, my kind of go-to cookbook for cookie table recipes, the Belt Cookie Table Cookbook by Bonnie Toss. And one of the rules she says is that you just want to make sure you kind of have a textural variety, a variety of colors. So it seems like Rosalind's family definitely has that in the bag. No pun intended. I don't know if that (laughs) pun actually works. Um, Anyway, definitely recommend this book. Uh, The author collected a bunch of family recipes. There's 41 different ones to try. And a few of my favorites so far have been the seven layer bars, the lemon lavender love cookies, and the spiced hot chocolate heart cookies. A baker friend of mine has been recommending lemon lavender cookies to me for actual years, and I've never actually seen them in the wild. I really want to. It's such a good flavor combo. Mm. I will double tap the spiced hot chocolate ones. Those are really good. I have the book, too, and I made those recently. (laughs) Am I the only person on this team that doesn't own this book? (laughs) I think Sophia and I were both gifted this book, so you need... You need someone in your life to bestow it on you. Apparently. (laughs) I would give you mine, but I have like started annotating it and like with the changes I've made to the recipes and what works. Oh, not to put you on the spot, Sophia, but you've been telling us you were going to cook your way through a whole cookie table book through the through the summer. So I think this should be your starting line. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely starting with this book, but I definitely have been poking around other Facebook pages and stuff, getting other recipes. So we'll definitely be a mix. I forget that Facebook is even a thing, but you're right. There are Facebook groups dedicated entirely to posting cookie table pictures and recipes. It seems like folks on there are pretty friendly and it looks like they're willing to share recipes. So it's not like all a state secret. Um, Definitely check that out, I guess, if that's a resource that you enjoy. Yeah, I joined one for fun recently. I pretty much open Facebook for the cookie tables and for buy nothing groups. And there are so many gorgeous cookie spreads on there. Uh, But if you're still looking for more cookie recipes, you can also head over to our website, pittsburgh.citycast.fm. I put together a list around the holiday season that includes some of my favorite cookie recipes. They're a little bit fall, wintry, think like spices and apples, but I also included my favorite snickerdoodle recipe ever. And those are a classic any time of the year. Megan, check that out. (laughs) I will definitely (laughs) check that out. So Megan, since you have so many weddings coming up or so many cookie table requests, um, are there any recipes that you want to try for the first time? Well, I was going to say Sophia has been promising to send me a recipe from one of your books. (laughs) For weeks yes. now. And it just came in. I did. <laughs> I'm obsessed with Frankie Gall's cookbook, First Generation. These are definitely not like traditional cookies that you'd see in Pittsburgh. Um, all of these recipes are from his Taiwanese American home, but these Captain Crunch cookies sound so good. Yeah, and mochi blondies you were telling me about. That sounds so delicious. Yes. Yeah, and I have to say, while I appreciate a smattering of traditional cookie table cookies, um, I do tend to gravitate toward the more unique ones. So, Sophia, I would definitely be sneaking more than my fair share of those Cap'n Crunch and Mochi ones into my purse. But I think we also want to ask our listeners for their own suggestions, too. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I am in search for more recipes for my baking quest. And if there's a recipe you think I need to try or a family recipe you want to share, let us know. You can email us at pittsburgh at citycast.fm or leave us a voicemail with your name and neighborhood. And you might even hear it on the show. So uh, you can do that at 412-212-8893. That's 412-212-8893. Well, since we are not all bakers, uh, even though we do love eating the cookies, uh, we also wanted to end with a few places to purchase the cookies. Uh, Sophia, you're up first, since I know you've been checking out bakery websites for like months now. (laughs) Yeah. So Bethel Bakery in Bethel Park looks like it'd be a solid option, whether you're planning a wedding or showing up as a guest. So if you're on the planning side and want to start off with a good base, um, the bakery has different packages to choose from that start at 10 dozen cookies and go all the way up to 50 dozen cookies. What? I cannot do that math. That's um, 600 cookies. Yeah, good base. <laughs> so <laughs> they come with a pre-selected variety of treats like Buckeyes and thumbprint cookies. They've also got other mini desserts like cheesecake and chocolate mousse tarts that are available. You know, you're right. That is just the good base because that's that's only 50 wedding guests by our by what we've been told is the appropriate ratio, right? Uh, and that's if you're being conservative. Uh, does Bethel do smaller batches? If say you just want to like pick up at your share, like your one dozen or two dozen. Yes. So they also have their a la carte menu, which has cookies by the dozen. Um, So they've got those same things I mentioned earlier, but also like mini lady locks, brownie bites with nuts, all different sorts of good little treats. Um, But I do want to shout out one more cookie that they've got on the menu. If you're really leaning into the Pittsburghness of the wedding, they have iced cookies that are like decorated so they look like uh, terrible towels with like the text and all. (laughs) Another place that sells wedding cookies by the dozen is Nancy B's Bakery and Homestead. And if that name sounds familiar to you, Nancy B's supplies the chocolate chip cookies to Pages for their ice cream sundaes. They're so they don't good. Have, yes, truly. Um, and, you know, Nancy B's doesn't have quite as many options as Bethel Bakery, but they've got all the classics, you know, Buckeyes, Thumbprints, Lady Locks, and more. And I've got another option for if you need more than a dozen. Clearly, I'm just thinking very big with these cookies. Um, (laughs) You can get three dozen or more and a cookie platter from Patty Cake Bakery in Bloomfield. They've also got pastry trays. I don't know. Is it bad etiquette to bring a bunch of pastries instead of cookies? I guess not if people are offering. No dessert is bad etiquette. (laughs) But I highly recommend uh, the peanut butter cookies at Patty Cake. And Moyo's has Italian cookie trays that start at three pounds, and they say that comes out to about six dozen cookies. I love the idea that you need to start working on your upper body strength to be able to bring one of these trays (laughs) to a wedding. Honestly. Uh, We also saw a lot of recommendations for Oakmont Bakery. They have tons of options to pick and choose from. And uh, City Paper did a roundup of places where you can order cookies. They've got spots like Prantles and Grandview Bakery on the list. Um, And then one more I wanted to throw out was Weddings of Pittsburgh. Hmm. Um, As the name suggests, they do a lot more than cookie tables. But one of their services is supplying you with all the cookies you need based on your guest list. They do fun customizations. They'll set up and break down the table. Um, Really a full service uh, offering if that's what you're interested in. Well, I hope this has been helpful for any listeners with a bunch of Pittsburgh weddings on their calendar. And Sophia, I really hope you get a Pittsburgh wedding invite soon. Um, But in the meantime, you are very welcome to continue baking for our team. Yes. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely be offloading a bunch of cookies on you in my quest to find the top tier wedding cookie. Perfect. Um, And, you know, if after hearing this episode, you've got a grand vision of all the elaborate cookies that you would like to bake this wedding season, um, but are worried about your cookie table budget, we actually have some good news for you and a favor to ask. CityCast is doing our annual listener survey. And if you fill it out, you will be eligible to win a $250 gift card. Think of how many cookies you could bake with that kind of money. (laughs) Gift card and some CityCast Pittsburgh swag. Uh, The survey is super quick. Our big boss actually timed it and it just takes seven minutes uh you can find it all at citycast.fm slash survey and it would really 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 help us out if you would fill it out please please even if you took it last year we would love for you to take it again so that you can be included in this year's data um so once again that is citycast.fm slash survey it's quick it's painless it helps us out and if you're the lucky winner you could end up with your cookie baking budget for the season plus a little extra leftover 
That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. Reminder, you can find all of our stuff, our shows, our content, everything from the Hey Pittsburgh newsletter on our website at pittsburgh.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the city. Talk to you soon. I always feel bad. Like, I always try to be polite with the cookie table to go bags. And then I get there and I'm like, oh, there is nothing left for me. Nothing. Oh, <laughs> oh you may- <laughs> I guess I just outed myself as the problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is the difference between a native Pittsburgher and someone who's not. I'm like hanging back and you're like, nope, my cookies. <laughs>